Hello, welcome to Wasting Time Podcast. I'm Chris, I'm here with Nick. Hi Nick, you alright? You alright? Yeah, I'm alright mate, how are you? Yeah, not bad, not bad. A bit tired, but all good. Oh, just the festival hangover, eh? Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. It, I mean, it has been a week since we've left, so maybe maybe I can't use that excuse still. But yeah, it was a tire, tiring few days. Not just the festival, festival parties, just... back to work after missing work last week. It, yes, exactly, all of that stuff, yeah. Oh, the weekend's almost upon upon us. Yeah, yeah. as we record this, it, it is happily, it's Friday afternoon. I'll tell you a little bit about the festival. That's kind of all my news, but before I get into that, did you have any music you checked out or you've been busy with life stuff? A bit of both, I guess, really, yeah. Mercy Music, new record. Cool. Do, you, do you, you listen to any of that? I don't think we talked about that last week. Apologies, listeners, if we did. Um, Yeah, I did. I did check that out, actually. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Mercy Music are a cool band. I think they've done stuff with Wiretap before. I think this one's out on uh, S-Spam Records, though. Um, Yeah. Uh, Were you impressed with it? Yeah, it's all right. Yeah, I was quite kind of I was expecting something a bit more kind of, I don't know, a bit more kind of heavier punk rock, but it's a bit bit more kind of got a more of a rock and roll vibe, hasn't it? Uh, uh, feel good rock and roll vibe definitely yeah 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 a bit surprised took me by surprise a little bit but oh, i've been, been enjoying what i've heard so be spinning that a little bit more yeah yeah um, i think a lot of our listeners would like that as well so check out mercy music if if you're not familiar with them already um but other than that no i've just i still not to bang the drum but been re- really enjoying that trophy ice record been keeping that spinning oh um, okay oh so you yeah, really just, are just into that. that yeah just want to keep going back to yeah. Um it, it more or less it more reminds me of that Valencia record, which I from like a subject perspective, because obviously they're quite, <laughs> both quite sad albums in terms of like their content, because I think the trophy eyes one is mainly around a friend that committed suicide. And oh, okay. Obviously yeah. that Valencia album was about like the tragic kind of loss of his girlfriend, but yeah. just in terms of like like um just the the songs and like the tempo and how they're written and stuff. I, I, I don't know. I, I, it's got some similarities for me. Okay, um, I hadn't made that connection, but that, okay, that old school Valencia one. What about you? That's about all. That's a, that. I mean, that's good going for me. To be fair. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you you you've done well, well there. I've been in the office this week, which helps because I get in the office okay. and I yeah. can't be asked to listen to people around me. So like, it's an opportunity to put some music on. Like, got you. you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing, nothing too much. A couple of new songs from Bearings. That's that was all right. I thought Kenny Hoopla's new stuff. I'm not, I'm not really feeling that. Uh, I can't remember if you said you'd listen to his new tracks. You'd listen to one of them. I think you said that you liked, but I think he's had three songs recently. Which all right, okay. I have not been vibing with myself, but all right, I did like. Yeah, I can't remember what the first one. Sabotage was maybe was. Yeah, the, that one. Yeah. I yeah, I really enjoyed that. Yeah, I can't be asked with it. Nah, not nice. feeling it. Yeah, that's kind of it, really. A little bit of the new um, Pink Spiders album, a little bit. That's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, that's it. So, um, 2000 Trees last week, or well, back end of last week. Yeah, so... So you, 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 you'll you be releasing some stuff soon from like your time there in terms of interviews, but I guess general general summary of how it was, like what yeah. you saw. Like... Yeah, yeah. So we went, unfortunately, we weren't able to go for the whole time, but we were there for a, a decent chunk of it. We went up on the Wednesday, came home on the Friday. So there, there were some bands performing on the Wednesday night as a kind of like introduction to the festival, whereas like the, the proper official days were Thursday, Friday and Saturday. So we saw the bands Wednesday night and then we were there all of Thursday where we did several interviews, which obviously will be coming out soon. And we we watched a few performances as well that day. And then Friday we left, so we didn't see anything on Friday, sadly. But yeah, it was good. It was good. We were we were treated really well. Good as gold, who who hooked it up for us, looked after us really well, which was good. Um, it was my first time camping at a festival since 2003, so a full 20 years on that one. Oh, really? Why 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 such a gap? I don't know. I did Reading like three or four years in a row at that time, and then I kind of wanted a break from that and then after a couple of years i was like yeah I'm, i felt like i was too old to really is that what it is 
Yeah. I think so. I mean, today yeah. it's an interesting conversation. Like, and it's like, I don't know, like, it's one of those things at, at our age where you think about festival and you're just like, yeah. oh, like, got to be around a load of people at different age groups, like, like yeah. in a field, you've got to share, like, communal facilities. And there's obviously, yeah, all day, yeah, like, you're fucking, yeah, home luxuries a bit more. But actually, when you get there, though, it's a fucking really good. Do you know what I mean? You have a really good time. You do. But, um, <laughs> yeah. And also, so 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 we we were lucky enough to have backstage camping, but backstage camping what wasn't that different to just normal camping. I guess it was just a bit less busy. You know, you didn't really the you know, certainly the whole time that we were there, the the loos were in a nice state and you never really had you never had to queue for the loos. So um yeah. and you could see at the main camping thing that was a bit more busy. So so yeah, I guess we we're a bit more comfortable than we would have been. Um, mm. Yeah. So and but having said that, as I said, we were there Wednesday to Friday. I was kind of like, you know, I was loving the festival. Would have liked to have seen more of the bands and spent more time with the people we met. But I was happy to be going home to home comforts after two nights like that. You know, I'm not sure if yeah. we've done four nights. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. You are. You know boy from the big city as well so, you know, yeah. <laughs> uh it's a it's a very cool festival though uh lovely setting so it's in the countryside just outside of uh cheltenham mm-hmm. and it just has really cool vibes about it definitely and you know you can kind of it you can take your booze like into the main arena and stuff which oh, you know okay. i don't remember being a thing at other festivals and they just you know they kind of it, it's really cool the way they go about it they say look you can take booze into the main arena, but, you know, kind of do us a favor. And can you please buy a couple while you're in there, you know, because it supports us right. and you you feel obliged to do that. And you're very happy to do it. And you don't want to, I mean, you don't want to be carrying around a fucking crate of, crate of cans. Well, exactly. You know, day, exactly. Like. And also they had, you know, like a uh, purity um, brewery had, had, um, had a few uh, stalls there. So I, I like their beer. So I was happy to, happy to pay for that. It was good, yeah. So the bands we saw, we saw what did we see on Wednesday night? We saw Holding Absence, who were like a Welsh kind of emo band, who were fine, not really, not really my vibe. But we saw Bob Villain, who there's just lots of hype about at the minute, and that was very entertaining. Yeah, yeah I saw they're on um, their like headline and Rebellion Festival. Like, yeah, that doesn't time. surprise me. Yeah, yeah, lots of people went to watch them on the main step. So, so they played the Wednesday night on. A smaller stage which is what we watched and they were playing the main stage on thursday which we didn't see because we were interviewing people but lots of people were very keen to watch their set on the main stage so on the thursday we we i kind of arranged the interview so we were able to watch the one Years set which i was very happy we did because it was great we also watched dan campbell do his solo aaron west stuff a bit earlier in the day that was fun and and then we watched which bad nerves who were seriously impressive i think right you know greg said afterwards like you felt like you're watching something special there and i agree with him like there's a lot of hype around those guys at the minute and you can kind of see why right um yeah bring the energy definitely definitely and um, we watched the bronx after that and that was kind of us done nice. it's funny we were we we caught up with the uh grade two boys because they were there um they were there basically to support Leo in reminders who who were playing. Uh, so we all watched Bad Nerves together, and it was good to catch up with those boys. But like they were they were going for it, like they were gonna watch some more bands, then do the silent disco and stuff. And whereas we were just like, yeah, we're gonna watch the Bronx and go to bed, you know. But I think those yeah. boys are in their mid twenties, so you know, yeah, fair where play was, to them. Where was Sid? What was his excuse? He wasn't doing some sort of Indian. Indian film or anything like <laughs> uh, I think I believe uh Sid was in the States, I think. So because his girlfriend lives out in California. So I think he right. was out I think he was out spending time with her. So it was oh, um nice. yeah, it was just uh Jacob and Jack and Pat do you know Paddy, their mer- their merch guy who travels with them everywhere. Briefly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I did meet who's, him uh, in Hamburg. Yeah. Who's an awesome guy. Um yeah, so it was it was those three. Yeah, so we had had a good time. I'll not I'll not go into who we spoke to who we officially spoke to for the podcast just yet because i think it'd be just nice to release that as you know and people can find out when that comes out although if you look at our instagram you'll you'll see some 
pictures of me and Greg with with some artists. <laughs> it's clearly after an interview. So, you know, if you want to do some digging, you can find that out quite easily, I guess. But I'll not say much more about that nice. right now. Look forward, to, look forward to hearing it. Yeah. Or seeing it, some some video, some video. Yeah, yeah, well. yeah. We film, we filmed it all. So yeah, we'll definitely. I'll do some proper videos of that instead of just the usual short clips that we that we do of the podcasts. Cool. Um, but yeah, we'll leave that for now, and um, let's get into today's guest. Uh, so this was, this was a couple of weeks back. I spoke to some of the guys from Beauty School Dropout who were kind of exploding. They've been opening for blink they've been they did download they're doing big tours everywhere and it, it's kind of i guess it's it, it all comes out of um them working with mark hoppus and pete wentz because both those guys basically signed them and and they've been championing championing them ever since and so i was really curious to to hear more about them and here's my chat with them Am I coming through on this? Okay, can you guys hear me? Okay, yeah, right there. We're just in a in a van in Switzerland. Yeah, nice. No. We crossed the border. Yeah, I was just about to ask where you were. So, hang on, what were you on the twenty third? So you played. You're in. Was your last show in Germany like two days ago? Our last show was actually a headline show in Zurich. You, so you booked like a couple of headline shows outside of because you be, you're out there with Stand Atlantic at the minute, right? Yeah. yeah. So we we got off the Maggie Lindemann tour and then we hopped on the Stand Atlantic tour. Yeah. And in between all of that, we've been doing headline shows on our off days and festivals and festivals and fitting in everything we possibly can. Bestie Wendy. They're really they're really wrenching the towel on this one. I mean, it is insane what you guys have been doing the last couple of months. Obviously, when I talk about talk about some of that, do you know roughly how, how long you guys have? Just so I have an idea how to, you know, what to. As long as you need. Yeah, plenty of time. I, just on the road right now i'm sorry in advance if we lose you for a second just because service is a little spotty but we have a wi-fi sure. router as well so if it drops in and out we'll uh hop over between service and wi-fi or okay um, i do think we're trying to find a spot to stop that has good service so hopefully we'll get there before it drops out but cool i'm with you i appreciate that i have two questions is this being videoed yes it is I've, yes videoed awesome second can we swear it is being videoed but this will mainly be released just audio i just throw up a couple of clips here and there on social media and yes you can absolutely swear fuck yeah <laughs> gotta make sure yeah exactly so yeah before so i was just gonna right off the bat ask a couple of questions about the shows in the last few days but before i do that i i'm being rude i haven't introduced myself my name's chris i'm based um I'm about 25 minutes southwest of london so i'm kind of almost yeah. in the suburb area of london um yeah, like do you, do you guys want to introduce yourselves to me? Absolutely. We are Beauty School Dropout. Howdy. Yeah, I'm Coley. I'm Beepus. I'm Bardo. And we're Beauty School Dropout. <laughs> and it is great to meet you guys, and I really appreciate you doing this show. Of course, you as well. Thanks for taking the time. Of course. Um, so, th- so these headline shows that you've been doing in between in between the dates when you know you've been doing between the festivals and the Stand Atlantic dates what have you how, how how have the headline shows been have have the uh have people shown up for them like because i know there's a lot yeah. of hype around you guys so i just want to make sure it's it's spread around europe properly yeah i mean the the cool thing is a this is our first time in europe besides yep. the uk last year we did reading and leeds um yes. and a headline show as well as a show of st atlantic so i mean uh stag dress and so it was kind of testing new waters and obviously we're still new fan but every single show we keep finding out we have committed fans yeah in the most random cities ever we played a headline show in Guildford we played a show in Liverpool we played Mm -hmm. a headline show in Zurich and all these like small areas and we just had zero expectations and every single time we've been blown out of the water that we have fans there fans there there's protesters outside (laughs) it's it's awesome it's a whole the whole spectrum. I think the craziest part of it is that like most of those people who are coming out are actually traveling to those cities from elsewhere. Like there was literally oh, wow. a couple we headlined in Zurich last night, and yeah, there was a couple who had been there from like Toronto, and then there was another group of like literally 15 people that came from Germany who saw us at a festival like the week before. Uh so it's it's really cool, it's a really cool affirmation to be able to see the conversion in real time and like to play a show one week 
in the next week, see just how many people are so excited off the first trip that they're like, okay, I have to come yeah. back for more. It's also fun oh, for us too, because in the States, obviously our audience is a lot bigger. So we're from there and we've done a lot more touring in the States. So it's kind of like mm-hmm. starting over from square one in terms of like building the audience out in Europe. And it's yeah. rad to get to do small little things that we wouldn't normally get to do. Like last night in Zurich, we decided, fuck it, we're going to play in the middle of the crowd. So there wasn't, we didn't ever go on stage. We just put the drums in the middle of the, in the room and we sat up all around it and just had wow. the crowd surround us and we played in yeah. the middle. What kind of cat venue was this? Hopefully. It was like a cap. hundred. It was like a tiny little venue. Oh, nice. It, okay. Yeah, it was amazing. It was like the third show they've ever actually done in that venue. And yeah. <laughs> they were just like, what the fuck are you guys doing? And it was pretty awesome. But it was still like that is so cool for us because A, we don't really get to do that very often. And it's a cool yeah. experience to get to share with the fans who then in turn are like, wow, I can't believe I got to see that before these guys are big, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And particularly, you know, because obviously, as you say, you guys are very big in other places, you know, obviously the shows you were doing in the States before you came over here. So that's cool for those fans in Zurich saying, hey, I saw them in this this environment. That's very yeah, cool. Yeah, of course. And then the U.S. fans are already on Twitter all pissed off that you know, like, what that's the, the fuck? That's the funny thing. It's become controversial, like especially because we played uh, like we've been opening most of these sets that we've played over the last four months. Right. So when we yeah. headline, obviously, we get more time to play more yeah, songs we can do whatever we want we can play four hours if we want to do yeah, but people right, on twitter right. back home are hitting us up being like oh my god i cannot believe you threw like <laughs> this song x y and z in the set list when we weren't there like it's our like, earliest song ever or just like these deep cuts and it's like well yeah of course <laughs> <laughs> but then it's also fun for us like last night we had to like relearn these songs that we haven't played in like a year right okay. <laughs> we just yeah, tossed yeah. them in the set Did they come, they awesome. come out okay surprisingly it actually totally fine Nice, yeah, nice. I think I got the fly. <laughs> There's a fly <laughs> flying around here, and we've been trying just, to subtly catch it. I think I just killed it in my shoe. Oh no, it's still there. Uh, <laughs> I slapped it. I got it. <laughs> Anyways, at least it's not a wasp. So, um, yeah. yeah. Are you? So you, you've got a festival in Milan in a few days. You have got some show. Are you doing shows most days in between? Then you've got some more the headline la- shows. Last show. This is actually our last show. We're um, is in Milan. Yeah, we're traveling there right now we have two days off which is okay a beautiful thing for us we've been on tour since february um so this is going to be a nice little like vacation aspect to our the end of our european tour how was um obviously you did downloads the other week what was that like that was the experience of that oh it's hot and sweaty and moist oh yeah very moist it was Mm -hmm. it was so sick too just because like we love European festivals. Yeah, um, yeah. We had such a great time at Reading and Leeds last year. And I think the the way that crowds interact over here versus the US, not I, I love the US too, but um there's just like this acceptance a little bit faster. Yeah. Um yeah. to just get in the mode to mosh and enjoy the energy versus like need to know the songs. Yeah, download was yeah. super sick because obviously it's such a big rock festival like very famous and very important rock festival and i think we just felt very honored to be there yeah down and, low 20 yeah and, and and to get to be there and arguably be one of the softest bands on the lineup was really cool right and right. i think yeah, we yeah, actually yeah. love we love that because we th- find it a, a kind of a, a bit of a challenge we always want to be either the, so- the softest band in the lineup or the hardest band on the pop lineup you know what i mean and right, yeah, i think okay. it's a fun okay. It's fun to be the black sheep in those situations because we had a really full tent and like a lot of people showed up to see our set. And I think we delivered a pretty cool punk show for them playing just our little pop song, you know? So yeah. I literally walked out on stage and I was like screaming at the beginning of our set. I was like, we might be the softest band on this lineup. But I don't fucking care. I want to see you mosh. I want to see you dance. And you better fucking. <laughs> It was it was pretty funny. It's like almost intimidating to like where we got there. We went to see our friends um, static dress and they're a yeah. sick fucking band. And we, the first thing we did, we got to the festival and they were on. So we ran over to their stage to watch and like they have a dude on a cross on their yeah, stage. Yeah, yeah. And we're like, oh, fuck. <laughs> We got to we, we got to go really hard today. Yeah, like <laughs> two circle pits going and we're like, all right, this is 
this is what our day entails <laughs> make people mosh to uh we made plans in god life you say they're good friends of yours did, did you mention you played some shows with them outside of reading and leeds last summer was that kind of like how your relationship with them came about the underworld in camden weirdly enough it's like great venue Ollie, their singer, like a year and a half ago, just DM'd me and just we just kind of like started chatting on the Internet. I'm like, damn, this dude's pretty fucking cute. And also he has a great style. So I'm like, (laughs) let's fucking let's talk it up. And so we started talking about um, doing some shows together. And then it all kind of came to be when we came out for Reading Leeds. And then it was rad. They're just honestly, he's such a visionary. And like their whole setup is just really cool and really kind dudes, like super, super kind um and so we just have always supported them and they really support us and it's cool it's fun to have like our like british counterparts you know what i mean yeah yeah of course but um obviously the last few weeks you've been touring with with some aussies how's it been with stand atlantic were you a fan of that band before oh we we love them they're so cool not only are they like great musicians but and they write fun ass songs but they're also just the dopest nicest people ever that the tour was yeah, legendary. The whole crew, amazing. And the band that played before us, Red Hook, they're also from Australia. So yeah. we were the, the token Americans on the Australian tour in Europe. It was really <laughs> cool, actually. And so it was just like so cool. There was so much good camaraderie, so much good That's cool. vibes the whole entire time. I'm actually sad that we didn't get more time to all just like hang out. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of moving around and we're all on like different schedules and different festivals in between the shows. So but they're they're great. They're actually going to be in L.A. What next month? They, they get back the same the day after we get back. Oh yeah, so we're going to try to kick in L.A. on our turf okay. with okay. our accents. Okay, there you no. go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was um I was at a, a Hopeless Records thing the other week, and they were at that. But I just I wanted to talk to them, you know, try and get them on the show and stuff. But they just had people around them all the time, so I never got the chance. But that's cool to hear that they're cool people. Yeah, He's super super good. Next time you see them, go talk to them. They're so cool. Yeah, no, I'll I'll force my way in there next time because uh, I really like their last album as well. Yeah, it's really good. Can I can I just jump back to the start a little bit, guys? Like, so you know, just and you guys haven't been Beauty School Dropout hasn't been a thing for that long. Is, is that right? It's about four years. You guys been going now coming up on four years. Yeah, and that is foul to think about. But it's also so interesting because it feels even like less than that in some weird right. way because we started right before. We started in 2019, yeah, and then as we were gearing up to do our first show, yeah, which was South by Southwest. Oh, I know what's COVID coming. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And thank God it did happen that way because we were not ready. Oh, interesting. Okay, okay. It kind of like put the brakes on everything and allowed us to kind of master our craft by force, almost like in a yeah. different way so we tackled the writing side we tackled the vision side we tackled everything on the back end so that way when it was time in 2021 to start playing shows we were like very clear-headed on what we wanted everything to look like sound like and be perceived as on like a visceral level versus just being on the internet like because you never know how it could have gone had, had the pandemic not happened like you guys you know if, if you yeah who knows we could have been selling out Wembley already oh that's true yeah yeah <laughs> yeah yeah so you're LA based are you guys all from Southern California originally or did you kind of come to LA to kind of embark on music what, what what's the background of the three of you I'm from San Diego and then Beepus is from Tucson He's from Cal Poly Slow. Yes, it's Cal Poly Slow. Yeah, I always say Cal Poly Slow because that's how I know it. It's Cal Poly Slow. No, it's it's San Luis Obispo, but I call it Cal Poly Slow. Rolls off the tongue. And Mike, yeah. Where do you? It's what? Is you say? Always say Bay Area. Where's the actual San Jose? What's the actual city? I'm I'm the only one not from California. Right. Okay. Okay. I mean, two so two you songs. Get, not... You have one percent less respect. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it seems reasonable. And I, yeah, at least fair. two songs. It's not by American geography standards. At least it's not that far away. If you're going by UK geography standards, then yeah, you're yeah, basically he's, he's like in country. Germany, basically. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> you had to go through border control just to get to fucking California. Yeah, they actually do have. That's in Arizona. It, does it's have one it. of the weird states where you have to go through like a border crossing to go from Arizona to California, where it's like right. the rest of the U.S. isn't like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. So we done that myself. It, it is a bit strange putting the, in perspective how much traveling we've done over here and like country to country to country and like accidentally ending up in Switzerland because we took a wrong turn. And then we're like in the States, it's like you don't have that, you know. You, yeah. you don't you don't accidentally end up in Mexico or Canada. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean, things all okay that you know don't have to get into this too much, but with things okay at the Swiss border because sometimes the bands that can be a pain because it's not technically in the EU. Well, like the UK isn't now, but oh, like there's so much pay. Like I manage a band and there's so much paperwork around playing shows in oh, Switzerland yeah. and this is all like so I'm glad if you guys didn't have shit with that we, we were very fortunate to not run into any of those issues all of our Excellent. issues that we ran into were uh leaving the UK and no, really? they're coming back to the UK and the Czech oh, Republic okay. and Germany oh yeah and the Czech Republic this is okay. a good story this is a good story uh when we were leaving the Czech Republic to go over to Germany we get pulled over and yeah. the car the cop car pulls out in front of us and it says follow us and we follow this cop car for like five minutes into the okay. wilderness area. It we it felt like we were going to get killed. I thought we made a mistake and weren't supposed to be following it at a certain point. I'm like, yeah. what? Are you and then they pull us up to like this like firehouse slash like police department, and they ha- make us get out of the car. They X-ray our vehicle, check our passports, check our passports. Ask us yeah. to like, do you guys have drugs in here? Are you guys doing drugs? And we're like, no. Yeah, do you do drugs? <laughs> we're yeah. like, the only thing we didn't get a cavity search unfortunately um, um but we're close we're trying to we asked for it yeah um, we give it to maybe us. next and then, time right? yeah. yeah maybe next time and then we so that was like a 25 minute ordeal and then we leave that and literally kid you not three minutes three minutes not even we get pulled over again and we're like what we literally just got pulled over apparently we crossed the border and german police pulled us over to do damn near the same thing just a little less scary and a little less aggressive but they like (laughs) got our passports they're like who are you what are you doing and i was like damn we need to not be doing this in a white van that's unmarked because it must look really suspicious right at least it was all good in the end but that is very random to happen just like three minutes later in the next country yeah it's crazy yeah so sorry going back to what i was saying so okay mostly from california partly from yes. Arizona prior to to this forming in 2019 so we're two two of you in the band called strange faces three of us were yeah i drank oh, three of last you. uh cole and mike were both in strange faces and i joined in at the very end of that project before it disbanded okay. how long did that project last for six months or how oh, long okay. were you <laughs> how long <laughs> you guys were in it for like what two years six months really did i do it for like wait wait we basically well i mean i joined i basically dropped out of school we wrote for mm, october through january went on tour in february march through may wrote an ep that just didn't come out and then the whole year after that was kind of this like oh we can make it work yeah (laughs) and uh so that's why I say six months. I mean, technically, yeah, I guess a year and a half or so. But yeah. there, in that last half, it was a lot of like, I think us really just discovering where we really wanted to go with our own musical careers, which I think ultimately led to like, I mean, fortunately enough, led to Beepus and I meeting, uh, which was how we got so close. And then he ended up moving back to to Tucson for like a year because at that point it was like already working with stuff on uh or working with mike on stuff like working with other yeah. producers and at that point i was like beep is like you need to move out here and work on music with us like this is you are soulmate and so that was quite literally i wasn't i to be honest didn't know what to expect because you did move back to tucson i was like fuck we lost him like that's never he's never coming back but uh he literally went home saved up and came back i told you a year and i did it in 11 months i know it was crazy it's actually pretty wild to see that <laughs> that progression happen because when you left i was like fuck and i'm like oh yeah because i met him in san diego and so i was living there and i was like i bet this isn't for me well i was living in oceanside california which is not exactly san diego it's it's mm-hmm. it's the the lesser cool of san diego Mike was a funny story, too, because we we essentially had probably like six weeks before we were supposed to go on that Strange Faces tour. We needed a drummer. We didn't have a drummer. And we put a Craigslist ad out and found each other. uh, And he essentially needed a lockout space. So we kind of 
<laughs> taking advantage of the upside of the situation. But lo and behold, we just became best friends. And now we're all here in a van in Switzerland. Well, uh, Italy. Italy. <laughs> yeah, now Italy. Italy now. <laughs> Welcome to yeah, 20 minutes ago, we were in a van in Switzerland. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm impressed the Wi Fi has been so. Con- I'm tempting fate by saying that now. I'm just saying, this is the best it's worked this entire it's fucking world. <laughs> We're on my service. Oh, that's why we're not on Wi Fi. Would you at all be offended if I uh pee in this bottle off, <laughs> off screen? It won't be it won't be on camera. Go for it. I don't think we, it. we, we Yeah, exactly. Silence. We've been doing this show for since 2015. I don't think anyone has taken the piss literally whilst being on it. So hey. Wait, wait hold I'm on. It's time for this. everything. To... Yo, let me call my stunt double real quick. Oh, he's coming. Come on, oh, yeah. Just a quick swap out. Stunt double. This is the Coley stunt double. Looks right. just like him. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Hi, mate. <laughs> I'm good. How are you? This is our friend's counterpart. This is our text stone. Yeah, man. I'm not too bad. Thank you. Just filling in whilst he's taking a wee. Yeah. <laughs> where are you from? I'm from London, bro. Yeah, I thought so. Yeah. Where, where yeah, about? North. So, end of the Northern Line, High Barnet. So okay. I couldn't right, yeah. really be further away from you in London. Yeah, yeah. I mean, opposites. Yeah, I mean, London's a stretch for me at this point. I'm in Walton on Thames. I'm near Kingston, basically. Okay, fair enough. That's a nice part of the world, though. Uh, Kingston's got a good scene as well. You guys would have been vague words further out, but when you played Guildford, that's not that like far from where I am. Yeah, we did play a show in London. We played O2 Islington. Yeah, was that with uh, Maggie um, Linderman? Yeah, and that was. Honestly, still one of my favorite shows of this tour. We we absolutely just love London. It is like one of our pl- favorite places on earth. Strange Faces was that was that like a similar kind of vibe? The music you were doing before it morphed a little into bit this. more like a little bit more indie rock, like alternative indie rock. It, it had a softer feel to it. Yeah. Um, like the how do you describe it? Like our front man at the time was very influenced by like. The national that's what it's called national yeah and then like yeah, the neighborhood yeah. stuff like that yeah. so it was i think it was definitely like more involved with the sound that was relevant at the time um but also still super good i still listen to our ep sometimes and think if it came out now it would do great okay interesting okay yeah maybe there will be a reunion someday and like what's so when the band in its current in its current version forms what you know what did you want to sound like did you conscious did you consciously like have a sound like we say we like these are going to be our influences or did it just kind of organically materialize the sound it's kind of this like i mean since the jump we've always had this mindset of like constant contrast uh and there was always this innate uh habit i guess to lean into a more pop sensical equation of writing if you will but like I think with that we always wanted to pair it with the heavy rock stuff and especially in the live shows which I think we're doing great at now is like this thing of like okay how do we turn a pop song into the most banger rock set possible uh and and so I think ultimately like we see no boundaries sonically we're gonna do whatever we want whenever we want but the through line is that no matter how pop or funk or hardcore or whatever genre we decide to tap into for that track it will always be performed in a stellar rock manner when you come see it live so obviously the pandemic kind of held things up and then it was like 2021 more when like you were kind band- of band- say again sorry he said more like a band demic <laughs> oh no, can't believe no one's made that pun before the amount of times we talked about the yeah, bloody pandemic on this show oh, wow first one's free <laughs> um yeah t- tell me about like so that coming to an end what how did you kind of regroup and what were the first shows you guys started playing so we played our first show almost like it's actually just been a, f- a few weeks past two year mark and our first show was inside of our friend's vintage clothing store and so we cleared out the bottom floor, moved out all the clothes that were in there and threw a party that was definitely before the restrictions were lifted to throw parties. And yeah, so yeah. kids were just ready to like rage. And this was also like as like rock was becoming relevant, I would say again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so it was like a perfect storm. Like 
every show we were playing basically one every two months after that we were just throwing free concerts in LA and we we're branding them as parties and every single time they would be packed to the brim we'd have lines outside and they just kept getting bigger and bigger and the storm just kept circling around us we were playing like clubs we were playing our friends bars we were playing anywhere we could yeah and it just like was starting this scene that was like around us and by it we also all write and produce for other artists too and so all of our friends that are in our world too we were just like it became like a scene that was like really happening in LA which is still happening we're just been gone on tour for so long but it was cool to have it that kind of come out of the pandemic and I think it really like slingshotted us into where we're at now how did it go from that to like the likes of Mark Hoppus and Wentz with their verse wire thing taking a lot of a lot of things bro did they kind of was there a link to them from this kind of scene that you're you're talking about that you almost kind of had a hand in creating actually I could take this one too it was I think they actually so basically the way that happened was basically a, a year after that happened uh these two ran into Terry Sadie, which is the CEO yeah. of our label, and yeah. they met Miss at a bar in yeah. in LA. Nice and, guy, nice guy, yeah. And started chatting, and she had known our manager Nick already, and so there was that pre-built connection. Okay, and she was starting the label. Sorry to cut in. Were you guys aware yeah. of who she was? Because wasn't she at Veeps or something no. before that? Yeah, she, she, she was. Veeps, we didn't. We had no we fucking idea who she was. I right. sat at this bar. Like, I got this fucking idea. I'm like, what? And she's like, I want to put bands together and do shit with them and fucking venture funding and yeehaw shit. I'm like, looking, I'm like what are you fucking talking about right now? I have no idea who this lady was. And I heard, I'm like, girl, what? What is this? I'm like, it's not because in LA you get pitched so many crazy ideas all the time, and you're like, okay, yeah. well, it's everything after the idea that actually matters. So I'm like, I thought this is, she was just kind of like this nutty lady that had I'm like, who are you? Like, and then then we had a follow up meeting with her like the next week, and she's like, listen, I'm serious about this thing, and I have the weight means to do it. And still, I think we're all kind of like, all right, well, what, what's next? Because we like, had said no to a million shitty record deals at this point. oh yeah at this point we're kind of jaded to to be honest to the whole yeah. like label situation everyone, everyone at that point was like yeah i want to be a fucking label let me you know give you a high five and a fucking you know shitty deal, yeah, <laughs> shitty deal. And you're like yeah oh, thanks dude yeah and, I, and we're like it's gonna be another one of those situations and then we had a meeting about it and we're still a little weary like okay we're like, we need to see you live and then they came and saw us play at the bardo during uh it was emo night's seven year anniversary and we yeah. had like Jason from Fever 333 came and guest performed. Literally imagine someone crowd surfing in a room of like a hundred people and just like right. stomping on people while screaming at them. Yeah, it was awesome. It was crazy. And they were just like, cool. It was cool. I think also the part that sold us was that she had brought Mark and Pete Wentz yep. onto the label with her. But she delivered. We're like, and she's like, yeah, they're my partners. And we got lunch with Mark which was crazy. And then we got yeah. lunch with Pete, which was crazy. And they were super interested. And the, as the story goes, they both got sent emails with like 30 bands on the email. And they're like, she's like, which bands do you like? And they both only responded beauty school dropout. Yeah. Yeah. I heard that. So story. that was right. It was pretty it was, legendary. It was when we sat down for lunch with Mark, I think when I was like, Oh, she's not kidding. He's actually going to do this thing. And it was crazy. And, it's hard to say no when like you're my two idols at least specifically growing up and i know like heavily influenced both them like are like interested in you and like yeah. gi- giving you advice off the jump and wanting to work with you and that's just like what was it like those first lunches with them both like we, did you keep your cool or were you like too starstruck and like like a bit nervous or were you just like did they make you feel relaxed straight away I think at this point we've met enough people. We always keep our cool. It's kind of like it's until a- after at least, and then we're like, oh. yeah, you're like, right. yeah, that was crazy. I think it's one of those things too. It's like you do something for long enough, and you put in enough work, and it's like one percent every day becomes a big thing, and then yeah. by the end of it, you res- it doesn't even feel like crazy anymore because like you feel like you've earned your seat at the table at that point. You're like, yeah, of course we should be here because we've like put in work to get here. 
I definitely freaked out though when we left. <laughs> it's pretty surreal. It was definitely surreal. But then at this point, now at this point too, it's just kind of like I actually catch myself thinking about things that I'm like, wait, why am I not freaking out about this? This is fucking crazy. Where like when I was 12, I'm in these weird situations that I'm like, damn, like I'm doing exactly what I want to be doing when I was 12. But then I'm like, right, you just you find yourself here after so many years, and you're like, oh, I should. I don't want to take this for granted. You have to catch yourself in those moments, you know? Yeah, yeah. Stop and sure. smell the rosebuds. Yeah. <laughs> and how was, um, obviously, you did blink dates quite recently. What was that? Oh, yeah. The fuck was that like? Smooth. That, it is, is it's that really cool. cool. Uh, it's very different compared to everything that we had done prior to that, just because, A, that was our first time, like, really having a tech on tour with, like, professional expertise. And yeah be being in venues of that capacity i mean to put in perspective we basically did a headliner in november last year that were two to 300 caps followed by a tour that was about 800 to 1500 caps followed by a tour the blink tour which was 20 to twenty five thousand caps that's uh, quite quite the leap isn't it yeah yeah definitely especially to within like eight months you know so to go leap drastically so far into that i think was pretty cool um but also very different in the way that like there is such a separation from the crowd and the audience and and obviously we're first to three so we're also having to then persuade blink and turnstile fans why we're the shit uh which is like so cool and such a fun challenge but very different in the way that like even our show that we played last night in switzerland it's like that was the smallest show we've played in the last four months but by far it was probably the coolest experience we've had because it was so intimate and so special yeah. to all the people involved. Yeah, um, yeah. So it's, it's all like, you know, they're all different playing fields, really. It gave us a taste of our end goal or not our, even our end goal, but yeah, like Madison Square Garden. Like now we want to go sell out Madison Square Garden. How do we so, make Madison yeah. Square Garden feel like that Switzerland show? Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. That's a good show. No barrier, like but that. no logs. Yeah. <laughs> no well, security um, <laughs> how were you at winning though for the turnstile fans and the blink fans do you think you were mostly pretty successful that with that super yeah i think we got a really good conversion a couple people hated us on reddit which was awesome we actually like the hate <laughs> um especially when they're coming from when it's coming from dads that like don't like anything that's new that's my yeah. favorite type of human we got called like what like rich la kids and yeah. we're like if only you knew how broke we were we are um yeah <laughs> and like it, it just like, it's it's funny to hear what everyone's like opinions are but on an overall aspect like it's actually kind of it was cool playing for that demographic because they're so respectful for the most part like after the show they're just like come yeah. up and shake our hand and say wow we really enjoyed your set and it's just like and they actually had like real substantial compliments which is like different than what we had been used to which the other side of it is also fun screaming girl fans are so fun it gives you like an adrenaline rush in its own yeah. right but it's like a cool juxtaposition to have played for both demographics in such a short amount of time my favorite is the the uh man i never like your type of music but i love you guys yeah <laughs> <laughs> so what 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 is the plans for for the rest of the year what have you got um, you're going to record any more music before the year's out? And on that, oh, yeah. I mean, whether you are yeah. or you're not, uh, uh, do you have any producers you would, you know, you're keen to work with or dream producers? Tons of music on its way. Two questions. Okay. Oh, no, you're right. good. Yeah, tons, tons of music on the way. Uh, unofficially, officially, we are releasing a body of work later this year to be determined when. Uh, mm-hmm. We got the next single coming out in about a month called Beautiful Waste. And as far as producers, too, we produce most of our music um, ourselves, but we do, we work with Andrew Goldstein. Um, yeah. He just did the next one that we're dropping. And Big I man. think, yeah, we love him. We did Almost Famous, the one featuring Mark Hoppus with him as well. Yeah. Um, and then we have our our dream list. Trying to get some dank features. Yeah. Honestly, we should all, we can all manifest that right now in this little Zoom yeah where as beauty school dropout gonna get some dank features before the end of this year feature we're gonna feature drake drizzy drake skrillex (laughs) machine gun kelly 
And Bring Me the Horizon. And Ethel Kane. Mm, Ethel Kane for sure. I yeah. think that's a good that's a yeah. good short list. There we go. Oh, and turns out. Sure we yeah. want we want Skrillex to produce an entire album for us. Yeah, that's our dream producer to work with. As like we want him to do his rock stuff with us, you know? We yeah, know yeah. he's still got it in him. You get a very interesting sound out of him these days, consciously trying to do some rock stuff as well. Oh yeah. That's that's definitely an end goal. I love to hear you guys do some stuff with Savini. You haven't done any stuff with Savini, have you, Zach Savini? No, but we know him, him, and he's just booked. He's he's down <laughs> to. We've talked about it. He's he's very keen on it. But yeah, I can imagine he's very booked up these days. Guys, I've got I've just got like a few quick fire questions, and then we can we can probably uh, we'll probably wrap this up. But this has been really cool. Thanks so much for doing this. Of course, thank you. Have you got plans to be back over this way anytime soon? I know you've literally just come from here. The 26th will be there. The, the, no, here. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah. Like well, we, we, we come back to London to fly out of London, but uh, we oh, are yeah, yeah, yeah. waiting to hear back on a few potential tours that we're shooting for. Obviously, it's to the bigger band's discretion whether or not those will land, but yes, yes we have every intention of being back here as soon as possible. We'll be back nice. before 365 days have passed. Excellent. Yes. Who is uh, the, who are some of the dream tours for you at the minute? I know I know obviously you've just done an insanely big one with Blink, but like who are some other names on your list? Honestly, hopping back on with Blink would be fucking awesome. Yeah. Bring me is a huge one for me personally. I think all of us really. Yeah. Did also, you did you do really? uh, sorry to cut in again? Did you do download a different day to the day they were doing this year? Yeah, the day after. Yeah, yeah, okay. We've seen them okay. before. We've seen them in LA, but it'd be really fun yeah. to see them here in, 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 in and obviously Europe. with them. Yeah. 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 Bardo wants us to tour with Skrillex. I would love to tour with man, who uh, who else? Justin Bieber would be so sick. Oh, Post, Post Malone. Post Malone, yeah. Post Malone oh, Post, would be yeah, fucking yeah. sick. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. it would work too. I really think that would work. I'm not saying that Bieber wouldn't work, but like Post Malone, like makes Bieber more would be sense, I think. but yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah i mean if you could plan that i mean come on <laughs> trying to think of some other like who is it there's this one girl who's popping off right now um a little bit different lane but lola young her stuff mm-hmm. is also yeah, really I crazy know. i don't know how well fitting of a tour would be but like just off of that one song uh don't hate me i i love her music it's so sick what what are some of the like alternative modern younger bands and artists that have impressed you guys recently any any ones that stood out in particular thanks so much is dang oh yeah thanks so much. oh yeah that would be a sick tour thanks, thanks so much yeah. it's crazy he's sick um all young we i've had an uh, obsession with this dude named Knox. i think he's just like such a dope songwriter um let's see let's see who else is static dress would be another person i would want to tour with oh, yeah. again because oh, yeah, yeah. That's the camaraderie cool. would just be insane. Oh, Kid Brunswick is a sick artist who's on the come up uh, in the UK as well, if you're familiar. Yeah, yeah, I oh, know, yeah. Kid Capici, oh. yes. Oh, fuck, yeah. That would be a great tour, too. Oh, God. There's so many artists that we're, like, surrounded by constantly that it's it's hard mm-hmm. to think off the top. But those are definitely, I think, some of the top picks right now for people on the come up who are what, worth checking out. Yeah, okay. Yeah, some good channels there. That's cool. Okay, yeah, so I'm just going to, give you some quick fire questions now if that's cool and then we then i'll uh let you guys carry on with your journey um this, this is one i like to ask everyone these days so i'm gonna give you give you three previous guests we've had on this show and you can only keep the music of one of one of those guests okay let me just who should i go for okay i'm gonna fire at you some 41 the main New found glory. You can only keep the music of one of them. Keep some 41. I would keep some 41 too. We just saw them live. I've never seen them live before. We play, we just we opened for them. I that saw that. Cool. How was that? Oh, so, their crowd was insane. I have never <laughs> seen people go that crazy, like up on the front barricade. It was nuts. Also, definitely one of the kindest group of guys we've ever met. Yeah, super, super, super nice, cool. down to earth people. It was really cool. Yeah, that was yeah, we, amazing. We had a date. It was Dave Brown who was on our show, and like we still still talk to him now. He was such a such a great guy. I had a great conversation with Tom about bird watching. 
And uh, you like you <laughs> Are you into your bird watching? Well, I love pigeons. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> that's really. that's not difficult to spot in Europe. Yeah, they're like confetti dubs. And he still tries for his hardest. To see he, yeah. He's like, I, look, everybody. Yeah. But he was like one of the first people to really hear me out on that vision. And, <laughs> and uh, uh, you know, that really resonated with me. Yes. And Dave watched our set from the side of the stage. And he was like sending us nice. thumbs up and good vibes all the time. And I was like, that's so cool because I looked up to them so much as a kid. And so just like that kind of like reassurance is so cool to get you know what there's so much love for that band because whenever i ask that question i include them as the choice i think they always get picked never left out um have any of you guys ever seen a ghost i told you these questions are random absolutely my house from third grade to seventh grade haunted is all fuck (laughs) i've also seen some shit horrendous (laughs) it was like a terrible experience and it's what? so vividly clear as well. Really? You give give, give yeah. a quick example of, of one of the occurrences. One night she was cooking and she was like on the oven uh with like she had her cutter out and she was chopping vegetables. And I will never this it was so funny in the moment, but like we had one of those old school microwaves that it's like you kind of gotta give it a pretty hard rip out of the wall to get it to open. Mm-hmm. And it was completely shut. And I remember she was cutting vegetables and on a dime, like out of nowhere, the door swung wide open and smacked her so hard in the forehead that it bruised her face. (laughs) But like in the moment, I just, me being a punk ass kid, I started laughing my ass off. And then she started laughing because the adrenaline was hot. And we're just like, oh my God, what? Like, that was so funny. And then we're like, wait, what? Like, how did that just happen? Because it was as if someone had literally thrown the door open into her face uh and from there on for the following three years was just absolute terror as a child <laughs> Fuck. i feel like we could, we could yeah. have a whole podcast just on that house you lived in um, i would love to there's some pretty fucking ridiculous stories i have to be honest let me i'll fire through like the last couple in case in case we lose you again because we're so close to the end favorite tv show oh shark tank gossip girl euphoria Fa- favorite stand-up <laughs> comedian Tom Tom Segura. Segura. Tom Skier right now. Or Dave Chappelle. I also like Ralphie Mae, but he passed away. And what's the best thing about living in LA? The opportunities. Yeah. I would even say hands and down. The babes. <laughs> the beach. The beach is a definite plus side for sure. And finally, oh, uh, best, what's the best country you visited? And then we'll we will wrap this up. Oh, I think my favorite is the Netherlands. Amsterdam was sick. I'm I love the Netherlands. Also, Switzerland purely for the beauty. Uh, beauty. I did the, the, the nature beauty. so far. Yeah, so far the nature in Switzerland's been amazing. I really like the Czech Republic. I'm biased, however. Everywhere, all of Europe. Hey guys, uh, I'll I'll let you go because um, it it was dropping out again there. So uh, I think that's oh. that's the universe telling me. Um, yeah. Beauty school drop out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, guys, thanks so much for doing this. So it's um, right, thank you so much for having us. Appreciate you. Yeah, and um, look forward to having you guys over this way again. And I will catch you next time. Sounds good. Thank you, sir. Cheers, guys. All right, bye. And I can't wait for you to arrive.